Hello there, everybody. We are back in the shop today, tearing apart core engines. And some of them were really bad. Look at the uh, uh, magnesium corrosion of that case. That case is junk. But some of the parts are salvageable. One of the things I pulled off a 1500 was this oil pump, which was real dirty. I've got some vinegar soaking in there now to break up the last of the crud. But uh, the rest of it has turned out pretty dang nice. And once it's all cleaned up, I'm gonna show you how to test these uh, oil pumps by the Bentley manual. There is another one running now in the very back of my shop in my little ultrasonic cleaner. And when that one comes out, I'm gonna clean that one up just like I did this one here. And then we will test both of them on the bench according to the Bentley manual. Once you clean up your oil pump, there's some things to check for. You can see this one, it had some damage up here. Probably at some point, somebody pried at it with a screwdriver. Um, you're looking for big gouges, scarring, things like that in here. You are gonna have some wear at the bottom. Um, you wanna make sure the shaft is nice. You wanna make sure that the gear set is nice. Now here's the gear set that came out of this one. And they, they will have marks on them, the guaranteed, because it ends up chewing up dirt and stuff as it goes through the engine. See, there's some scarring there. Uh, what you don't wanna see is it have it real bad pitting, major scarring. I have another gear set here that came off another one. This one I would not use. Uh, the pitting is just too much. I think it, it had water in the case for a long time. The idler. Yeah, you can see that one's really rough shape. I would not use this one um, for a build. And you see it even at the end of the, the, it just is in pretty rough shape. So check your gear set out. You wanna make sure that the idler gear fits tight on that shaft. And I don't feel any play. Of course I did this with, also did this with two hands. You know, filming it I can't really show. But I really set that up and moved it to different, positions and really tried to move. I, I feel very, very little, if any, play on the shaft. That's very important because if this is loose on the shaft, you can lose oil pressure because everything is, you know, flopping around in there. So these are, this looks pretty good candidate. You can see there's some damage here, but that doesn't matter. That's on the outside of the case. We are going to test this by the Bentley manual. There are three tests given in the Bentley. And uh, we'll see how it how it ends up. I think it's going to pass. Of course, we don't know until we really get in there and look with the dial indicator and whatnot. But let's check it out. The Bentley manual gives you three tests on a oil pump. You can find this on page 52 of the blue Bentley manual. And this is the pump that I'm looking at first, the one from the 1500 off of 1967 case H0 code. And the first one I'm gonna do is we're gonna check the backlash of the gears for wear. You have up to eight thousandths of an inch that is permitted. All right, I have the oil pump in a vise, just as it's shown in the Bentley manual. And what I've done here is I have placed my uh, best test, brown and sharp, dial and test indicator on the gear, the drive gear, of the oil pump. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the idler gear in place and then rock the drive gear back and forth to see how much backlash there is in the gears. And as we saw, we have up to eight thousandths of an inch that is permitted. Okay, I'm sorry that I can't get it to zoom in on the dial face without being blurry but I'm set at zero right now. Each graduated line on the face of this dial test indicator is one half of one thousandths of an inch, 0 .0005. And I'm, I'm now holding the idler gear in place and I'm going to rock the drive gear to see how much backlash is in the gear set. And you can see, if you're familiar with the face of a brown and sharp best test indicator, 
that I am reading right at four and a half thousandths of an inch of backlash. The space right here is a five. That's five thousandths of an inch. It was at the zero. And it repeats about every time to right at four and a half thousandths of an inch. Which means that this is in spec because we had up to eight thousandths of an inch that we could have for backlash. So, so far it's checking out good. Let's go to the next test. We're gonna check to make sure that the idler gear is tight on the shaft. It says here that you need to have a tight gear to shaft fitment. And it also gives a dimension here that we're gonna check with the depth mic that has 20 to 40 thousandths of an inch as an acceptable measurement. So I'm gonna go back to the bench vise and I have a zero to one brown and sharp depth mic here that we are gonna use to check that measurement. Okay, I've got my depth mic set in place like the manual shows. And I'm going to go ahead and take a measurement here. And it's kind of tricky because there isn't much of a step in there for you to get a measurement on. But I'm reading just at 24 thousandths of an inch. And remember we had between 20 and 40 thousandths as our tolerance. Finally, we're gonna do the end play test, which you see they're using a square there with the oil pump in the vise. And what he's doing is he's checking to see how much play there is from the face of the pump body to the gear set, see if there's an end play available. The maximum allowable end play without the gasket is four thousandths of an inch. That's the maximum. So I have a one and a half thousandths, a two and a half thousandths, and a four thousandths feeler gauge here. And in the Bentley manual, it shows them using a square, but I prefer to use a parallel just because it doesn't rock as easily. And it's just, you get a little bit more surface area. And you can see here, I can, I can slide the one and a half thousandths through. It's a little bit more loose down there than in the center. The two and a half thousandths will go where the idler gear is. It really won't, I mean, I'd have to really force it up on this end and obviously the four thousandths is nowhere close to starting. So the manual said you can have a maximum of four thousandths end play in the gear set. So this passes the Bentley manual test. Finally, even though the pump has passed the test, there is something else we're gonna to wanna to look at before we are done with this video, and that is the pump cover itself. These are pretty, I save all the pump covers that I get. These ones are pretty rough shape. If, if a pump has been run for any amount of time, you will see these marks, these wear marks on the face of the cover. And it is very important that you don't leave it like that before you reinstall it. You either need to get a new pump cover or you're gonna see the solution that I have is I surface grind the pump cover to make sure that it's completely flat. And the reason for that is, is you will develop end play. Remember how we checked the end play a moment ago? If you get deep grooves into here, you'll actually increase the end play on the gear set. So you need to make sure that your pump cover is flat. I would not recommend just putting a piece of sandpaper down and doing that or using a belt sander. I would really get it flat so that you know the gear set over the whole face of it is is not going to be having a high spot or anything in the in there. And it's just going to be nice. So I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so what we have for the finished product is a really nice flat surface with a decent finish on there. And this makes sure that when the pump cover is installed, it's nice and flat against the housing and uh, it'll come out real good. So the next time you're tearing down cores, make sure you save things like the oil pump. They can always be checked later. Even if the housing, this, this gear set came out of a broken housing. I just save everything. Might be able to find a use for it in the future. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you uh, are keeping these Volkswagens on the road.